What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist and I'm here with Gersh1 and today we're back at it answering more of your questions and another for the greater world. <laughs> this is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below, put a question in front of your question because we'll get those questions first. And that is what Just Kano did. Is it possible for turmoil in the warp to be reversed and return to a relatively calm place like it was before? And who could do this? Thanks, fam. More than likely, no. Yeah. The way the warp is right now, it's too chaotic. Um, but back in the day, what was it, 60 million years ago? Yep. Um, back when the old ones and the Necron tier were there, uh, the warp was a relatively calm place. Yep. Um, it was basically like the ash weights, but like everywhere. Yep. And then you saw the Psych Nguyen spur out of the warp start attaching and latching onto sentient beings, and then the old ones and the Necrons kind of like went away. Yep. And that was basically the cleansing of the material realm. But once uh, other beings started being um, spawned, created, birthed, mm -hmm. um, that's what led to a bunch of humans and other aliens and like their beliefs and ideas and thoughts started coalescing and creating the chaos gods in the warp. Yep. Uh, rumor has it that Nurgle or Korn was first? I think it's Nurgle. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And also, like, you gotta think right now, the domains of the chaos gods are solid. Like, it is hard to invade Nurgle's mm -hmm. uh, garden. It's hard to go into Korn's realm. Um, for that to just completely disappear would require, like, some type of force that is bigger than all four yeah which probably wouldn't happen uh and gw doesn't seem to like want to mess with that because no. the warp and the setting of the warp brings or creates the aesthetic of 40k mm -hmm. uh you want this like demonically like uh, just sadistic place out in the galaxy it's almost um it it, it evokes an emotion of pure dread to know that like you as a normal person as a human the moment you start to travel uh, outside of your you know your world your planet you you are you're nothing you're like a piece of meat to all these monsters that are just out there uh, these sadistic creatures and they're not just gonna like eat you or kill you they're, they they want to torture you mm -hmm. and yeah that that that's part of the whole aesthetic of 40k yeah the grim dark future and they've really showcased that well with like the one of the strongest characters ever put in print in 40k Caldor Drago like this dude curb stomped Mortarian which got retconned but he still curb stomped him he goes into the warp and he just takes names left and right kills demons burns down Nurgle's gardens mm -hmm. but this means nothing the chaos gods are so strong they'll just snap it back into uh, reality in a way yep so everything uh, Drago is doing gets undone Right. And it's just this cycle of like that won't go away. And it basically it really shows you that as strong as this one character is, chaos um, won't go anywhere. Yeah. If you want to like create some type of fan animation or some type of fan world where this does or this could happen, uh, I think you could draw parallels to the story of the creation of the earth in like Greek and Roman mythology, where like, before there were the titans and the titans would represent the chaos gods and they were actually um uh, what is it called they were like um placed in their tomb or placed in their like prison by zeus himself um and that's kind of like the whole hercules thing when like uh hades opens up the thing and the titans come out uh so these gods could be placed so you're saying like tartarus is the warp right or not not even Tartarus, but like that gets created by whoever this uh, Zeus figure is, which would be the emperor mm -hmm. probably. Um, and then there's a, there is prosperity afterwards uh, where like the immaterium becomes chill. Um, but yeah, I mean, would that actually happen? No, obviously not. But yeah. you could play around with that. The only way I see the immater or the warp becoming chill is if they put like a hookah lounge in there. Yeah. They serve really good um, tiki drinks, mm -hmm. and um, they just make it good vibes. Kind of yeah. like three dots in a dash. <laughs> exactly. 
This next one is by All Might. What would happen if the first alien species we discover is literally a perfect word-for-word -word exact replica of a 40k orc? Would GW become a superpower since they kind of predicted this? No, I don't think so. I think it would be like a coincidence. A coincidence, but we'd be, we would we would be fucked. <laughs> yeah. Because humanity, knowing how we are, we would take an orc, bring them to Earth, dissect them, spores would be released, and now we have orcs in the Amazon. Mm -hmm. Orcs on the equator. Orcs in Afghanistan. Orcs inside other orcs. Orcs outside our <laughs> house. If they come inside, then they're squigs. Kind of like rats and mice. Yep, yep, yep. Mm -hmm. You know what, though? They probably couldn't buy a house just because the house market is That's true. It's so crazy right now. It'd be very interesting to see a domesticated orc. Yeah, just coming home. Yeah. Hey, Pablo, bring the pizza. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> okay, what did I tell you? Just stops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. This next question comes from Bunny Hop. If you could bring a model or a unit from Age of Sigmar to 40k, which would you choose and how would you change it to look more futuristic slash grimdork? Um, I think the new um, orcs that they came out already look grim dark enough. Yep. Um, they look d grim darker than the beast snacker boys. <laughs> yeah, they do. It's like they could have been flipped and yeah. like nobody would have ever known. Mm hmm. Um, but no, I think I'd, I'd want to put some type of mount into 40k because um, usually when you have fast attack It's either because like they have some type of like engines whether it be like on a suit or a bike And like that's how they get around faster. Um, very rarely is it an actual like creature mount. Um, yeah The only thing I could think about is like Slanesh and like the uh, The little yeah, anteater things. Anteater riders or the Thunderwolves for the Space Marines um, but it'd be pretty cool to have like drakes um and what are the other things like those like cat like like lizards that like the eternals yeah like the, the slaves of chaos the ones that they, oh, they ride yeah i don't know what they're called but yeah yeah it'd be pretty cool to see that in 40k just have like a chaos lord riding that type of uh beast yeah mounts I think it would be really cool to have bring the lizard men and like all of their mm -hmm. faction into 40k and call them like the old ones. Yeah. Even though I feel like the aesthetic of the lizard uh, men uh, in Age of Sigmar and in Warhammer Fantasy was very like Aztec and Mayan, which I don't, that wouldn't really f vibe with the sci fi elements of, of 40k. Well, what uh, if you replace like the rock with like Noctilith or something like that? Maybe, yeah, that would be kind of cool. But still, it's like the whole point is that the, the pylons um, and like the constructs of the Necrons, which are made out of Noctilith, they don't really look like rock. No. They, they have cracks in them and stuff, but they still look way different. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be something like that. Um, actually, that, yeah, like that might work to make it not, not like the rock aesthetic but like the necron construct aesthetic mm -hmm. with lizard people yeah because that makes sense because old ones were like anti-warp yeah and noctilith or blackstone literally repels warp yeah so that kind of makes sense yeah well yeah or absorbs it or something because i know like the way they fire their cannon is they absorb warp energy mm -hmm. and shoot it and out shoot it out yeah it would be cool to have old ones though mm -hmm. skaven is another popular one that a lot of people talk about even though I don't think Skaven really fit in 40k. Like, you have smelt rats and stuff like that, yeah. but I don't know. Because their whole thing is, like, the rat god. or mm -hmm. Yeah, right? The yeah. great horned rat. Yeah. He horny. Very. This other one is also by All Might. Since humanity is so oppressed by the Imperium, which authority oppressed them the most? Is it the Church, the Inquisition, or something else? Who? Like, who's the figure or the institution that is oppressing humanity the most? Ah, okay, okay. I think it's the bureaucracy of the Imperium. So it's yeah. a little, it's a combination of all of them. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they, it, they're all taking a piece of the pie, and the, the, the pie is, like, the <laughs> happiness of the yeah. regular Imperial citizen. The workforce, yeah. So you have the Adeptus Mechanicus going, like, you need to venerate this machine spirit. How does the machine spirit work? Don't ask that question. Right. Like, and then you have... Pray. The, yeah. The, yeah, because the Imperial Creed has that, or the Ecclesiarchy, where they're like, you need to worship the Emperor. Why? Don't ask questions about the Emperor and his history. Right. 
he talked about the imperial truth. You shouldn't know that. That kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. So like they, all factions mm -hmm. are just like beating down on the imperial citizen. Yeah. And he's just sitting there. I'd say the Inquisition probably has the least type of oppression, but it are the more direct. Because obviously most humans don't know about chaos, cults, xenos, that type of thing. They're very sheltered and like close-minded when it comes to that kind of stuff. Because the more knowledge somebody gets, the more they'll start questioning and going against the regime put in place. Um, but once they do learn and like start acting for themselves, that's when the Inquisition gets involved. Mm -hmm. But normally, no. That, that They won't really play that big of a role. This next question comes from Goferia Rebels. Sup? How are you? How how you guys been? As good as we can be. I'm at uh, 92 percent today. Damn. Uh, food still tastes a little weird. <laughs> are 30k technology more superior than 40k technology, or does that just depend? It depends slightly, especially now with the Primaris stuff. Mm -hmm. But I do think that like a Contemptor Dreadnought is going to be better than the Primaris Dreadnought. Yeah. I'd say like 92% of the time, 30K stuff is better. Yes, yeah, I agree. Because <laughs> uh, usually the 30K stuff can kind of taste. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, this one's by Bunny Hop. Thoughts on the Warhammer Plus free episode? I enjoyed it. I had fun uh, watching it. But I think what you said is kind of true. Yeah, basically it's it's enjoyable if you don't think about it yep. <laughs> and then you start to notice all the little imperfections like to me i don't know about you but it didn't make much sense like that whole beginning portion before they got to the yarrick part like it just like yeah these two orc boys are trying to kill this uh gretchen, gretchen. so the runt herder is like i'll give you guys a story it's like wouldn't they just kill him yeah yeah most of the time yeah because it's like the whole plot of it was basically uh here's a campfire story about our enemy yarrick and how he's fought and basically telling his lore through um this animation but most of the time the <coughs> animation wasn't that great no nope. like at some instances it, it seemed very choppy uh sometimes they, it was no animation it was just a still image and it, like panned yeah. um but but i do agree that what you were saying like if this is supposed to be like they're they're, yeah. they're showing it for free so that you get Warhammer Plus, but it's like if I'm gonna get more of this type of uh, art and this type of like um, stuff, like I'm just gonna keep watching YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Cause how much is Warhammer Plus? Like seven bucks a month? Uh, six. Six bucks a month. Or if you buy the yearly thing, uh, you get two months free. Yeah, so it's one of those like, uh, if this was your way of hooking me into uh, buying this, it didn't work. Right. I enjoyed it though. Yeah, it was it was enjoyable. It was nice. It was cool to see like the orcs and the Astro Militarum fighting. But like, what did you think when the Space Marines came? Oh, it looked different. Yeah, yeah it, looked it was weird. it was CGI, and to me, like you couldn't feel the strength of the Bolter being fired. Yeah, um, I th <laughs> it's just it wasn't the the quality wasn't there for me. I was expecting more. Yeah, I would say this, though, that, like, this is normal for these types of streaming services. Because, again, like, we need to look at this for what it is, and it's GW trying to make more money off of the, the, the their game that they created mm -hmm. by getting people to buy into a new subscription service, which is, like, Netflix. And we know what happened with Netflix. Netflix has trashy-ass, like, content, like, that they produce, um... Not, they're all, just not all the time. Because well, in, the, in the thing, I mentioned Castlevania. That is oh. a Netflix-produced thing. And if you saw that last <laughs> season of Castlevania, best animation I've seen in years. But that's one in, like, right. probably a hundred other That animes. is the shining gem in, yeah. like, the, the coal mine, I guess you could say. And that's, I think that's the same thing that I'm trying to say with the Warhammer Plus. We're going to get a bunch of videos like this. But, like, like, I would understand if they would do that, but if they're trying to entice you, why show us this lump of coal instead of like uh astartes 2. i think it's because they don't want to like oversell and they already have uh astartes so we already know the quality of astartes mm -hmm. so it's like we don't like in them like their mindset is like as a business we don't need to sell people on astartes they know they it's know good. it's there yeah so now what we need to do is like give them extra stuff also like 
<clears throat> the whole fact that it's a campfire story, and like you said, like the runt herder should have just killed these boys, um, goes to show that they're really targeting a different audience too. Mm-hmm. They're targeting like a more like kid friendly type of audience and stuff. Um, and I know people are gonna say, "Oh, but there was a severed head in the beginning." <laughs> like that's the first uh, uh, scene. That's like that's normal. That, that kids are used to that. Look at Adventure Time or Bionicles. <laughs> Bionicles. Yeah, like yeah. that stuff is not out of the the, the norm anymore. Mm-hmm. Like we're not in the seventies anymore. Right. Um. So, like moving forward, yes, I hope that they do put out like a Stardies for free, even if it's just like five minutes of it, um, to entice you to get the six or the the subscription. But um, it, it wasn't like terrible. Yeah, I agree. Well, what did you give it out of ten, or what would you say? For like watching it and not paying attention, I think no. In in general, like say you're a fan of forty k and you're watching it for the first time. Oh, uh, no! If I was watching it for the first time, I well, I don't know, because what draws me into the forty k from the very beginning is that there's way it's like there's way more lore to this than what I'm being given, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I got those vibes from it. So. I would probably like be entertained, yeah, as a kid. You know. Yeah, I would be like, yeah, like I like I wonder what this world is about. Okay. Yeah, especially because no. it's orcs. Right. So as a new person looking at it, you're just like, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. But as you were watching it, what yesterday? Mm-hmm. What did you think? I still liked it. I enjoyed it. Like I watched it, and I was like, oh, this is, like it's good old Yark. Like it's a story that mm-hmm. I remember we talked about a really long time ago. <laughs> Yeah. Do they ever talk about Yarrick anymore? Nope. <laughs> no. So that's a, that's another thing too. Yeah. That's a huge bummer for people. Right. Because it's like, oh, there should have been a new mo- a new Yarrick model, and then use this as like that advertisement for it, or at least a new story too. Mm-hmm. Like we've all heard the story of how he got captured by God School. Like that's not new. Right. But, but it would have been nice to also see a new story with Yarrick and God School. Yeah, that would have been pretty cool. But then it's like. I don't know if they're going to be making like lore changing stuff in these animations. Because if it is, and I think that would entice more people to say, well, I have to subscribe to it to know how the, uh, how the lore, how the story, how the timeline will progress. Yeah, and it also, <clears throat> I think, who knows if they're going to do this, but like it seems like because they're focusing on the runt herd, which you don't really use in Fortnite. Like, I don't even think he's a, a thing in the um, the new codex anymore because he wasn't in the previous uh, codex. You could include him, but he didn't provide anything for the Gretchen squad other than just like he has the grab a claw that, that you saw. Yeah. So I wonder if with these stories, uh, Games Workshop is going to be talking about models and characters that don't necessarily uh, get talked about on the tabletop. So that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. But who knows? Like, I think it's really, really early. Yeah. I mean, this is just like a little freebie, a little sneak peek as to uh, what you can expect. Yeah. And other than a starty, there's no other. um, Oh, what about the Angels of Death? A Um, little bit. I just don't like Blood Angels all that much. Yeah. Or Tyranids. (laughs) (laughs) Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. I mean, there's more than just this Hammer and Bolter anthology style coming out. So uh, we'll see what they have to offer. Yes. Um, and yeah, those are the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Yep. Thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. This has been the Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out of here. <laughs>